What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going over some new arrivals from River's Edge Cutlery and some stuff from DLT Trading. I know a lot of you think, Metal Complex, why would we sit here and listen to your commentary on this stuff when we can simply go do it ourselves? You're right. You can. That's why I link these pages right at the top of the description and because it helped because when you click on it, it helps my channel. Um, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over a few things. from. There's just a few things at River's Edge Cutler I think are interesting, uh, stuff that I want to make people aware of. And then we'll go over to DLT and look at some other uh, stuff. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below at the, in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, so um, what we need to do, I should have lowered my the the section where I um, you know screen record because now everybody's gonna see that I have not um, done my update. <laughs> and that's just gonna drive everybody crazy. Sorry. Demco 80 20.5. Those will last however long they have them. But considering how often these have been dropping lately at various retailers, if you miss it, there's probably more coming. That black handled clip point is definitely what a lot of people are after. Tie to Techliner Hex Shorty. Uh, I believe that's a pen. Um, at least I hope it is. I don't know what else it could be. Um, <coughs> pretty interesting. Fairly expensive at $89, but uh, interesting for sure. I've got some fixed blades from Essie. Those are always good. We have some cool, um, I don't know if I want to say unique, but just really interesting. We have a penguin in brown. It looks probably like burlap micarta, the D2 model for 32 bucks. It's always a good buy. And we have a more expensive, if you really want shredded carbon fiber. I mean, like who can argue at 38 bucks? Who can argue? Like what? anybody who makes fun of somebody for buying a shredded carbon fiber penguin, it's like, it's 38 bucks. Like that's a really, really good deal. You know, if you just want to have the penguin, you want to spice it up a bit. You're not even spending 40 bucks, which is generally the low end on a, on a good budget knife. $40 is usually like, wow, that's a good deal. This, this is a dollar for a dollar 36 lower. No, a dollar 34 lower. My math. Sorry. I still got it wrong. Orange one. This one's out of stock, but recently they did drop the orange Demco 8020. 0.5. Um, so yeah, uh, just, you know, another reason to be paying attention. Some, um, I've never tried this gunny magic OTF lube, but if you've got a, you got a problematic OTF, you got an OTF that's misfiring. I always, I always go with rem oil. Rem oil can be expensive and kind of hard to find right now. So, you know, for those of you who want to try that, looks like it's made specifically for OTFs. The legendary Civivi Cogent, of course, River's Edge Cutlery does pick up um, all the newest Civivi models, or at least it seems that way. So there you go. Uh, Buck 110 Hunter and Ebony Wood. Let's move on here to the second page. I think there's a couple of other things. REC gets some interesting Protex. Not that they're unique. They're just color variants that you don't often see. And I don't know what it is. Like, I mean, maybe it's just my imagination. But whenever I go to River's Edge Cutlery, I find uh, these Protex that are in, you know, more often the altered colors. And I mean, not the simple stonewashed or satin blade with the black handle, which, you know, those are popular. Those are generally the ones that I pick up. But if you like some color, you like some, you know, just more going on with with your knives and you like Protec, River's Edge Cutlery is probably a good um, place to check for sure. Got some flashlights here, some of those lighter and flashlight combinations, the thing that Olight's doing, I don't really get that, but okay. Um, some Hinderer hardware. If you're looking for some Hinderer hardware, they definitely, well, they have some of it. Um, working finish and stone wash. We have a Sand Trooper Microtech um that's an exoset i forgot the name there for a second uh spider shaman um lynch clip so i have not tried this and i am super tempted to buy this um well, i have the mxg deep carry clip but this guy looks a bit wider might might be a slightly better choice i also like that there's a hole in it for sure um this is a oh a wire clip replacement there's more shaman clips right um, I think that's pretty cool that he's doing that. So anyways, moving on here, I think there was only about three pages or so of stuff that I wanted to show. Oh yeah. So a lot of people say, I'm, you know, when I made that post to say, I'm holding out for the, the shark lock, 
Um, I'm sorry, the shark's foot with the black handle. They did drop that on River's Edge Cutlery, and I can almost guarantee that they will do this again. Um, so, yeah, be paying attention. I also won't be surprised. I'm not saying they're going to do this, but I wouldn't be surprised if River's Edge Cutlery did a um, an avocado AD 20.5. <laughs> I don't know if they'll do that or not. They do. These are the guys that have the custom Cerakote service. So, you know, you might that that's on this website. You might if you're if you're interested in picking up an avocado 20.5, you might email them about that and see if they'll do it. If they're planning on doing an exclusive, they probably will not offer that setup as an option when you're wanting to customize your 20.5, right? Um, so yeah, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and you know, for people who are holding out on a particular color, um, for an AD 20.5, you can always just buy one of the ones that's available and then send it off to River's Edge Cutlery for custom Cerakote. You can make the blade whatever color you want and the handle, they will, as far as I know, I think they will Cerakote, I don't know, I don't, I shouldn't say that. I've seen them Cerakote G10. I don't know if they'll do Grivery. So you might need to email them on that. But yeah. Um, the new, <coughs> I'm very, <coughs> excuse me, interested in the McNeese Customized PM Mach 2 3.5 inch. The smaller one was not my favorite thing in the world, but the 3.5 inch I think would solve a lot of ergonomic issues for me. Um, so these are all out of stock at the moment, but it, they, they do look very cool. They do get hinders. Those of you who are hunting hinders, uh, obviously these are out of stock, but you know you can add them, another uh, retailer to your list, um, and sign up for notifications if you are hunting uh, a hinder XM18. Let's move on here. I don't think I actually went into page four. I was looking at this before we started the before I started the video, and I don't. I just assumed that there would be not a whole lot of yeah. Okay, so. Uh, that's, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about with River's Edge Cutlery, but yeah, absolutely. Um, they're great. I've done business with them many times. Um, always easy to communicate with. Their custom services are wonderful and they get a lot of, uh, cool stuff. So make sure you check them out. Let's head over to DLT Trading and see what they've got, um, for their new arrivals. And actually before I do this, um, for those of you who are wanting to enter for um, my uh, Ultimate Knife Mods contest, which you may or may not have seen that upload today. I'm not sure if I did this in the morning and the other one in the afternoon. I'll probably do this one in the morning. So the Knife Mods contest is coming in the afternoon, volume one. If you wanna enter for that, and you have a Demco AD 20.5, right? Um, or you're thinking of picking one up um, because of this video. Let me show you here on DLT Trading, um, there are quite a few Sorry, let me shovel more potatoes into my internet. Um, there are quite a few custom RGT scales for the AD 20.5 just sitting here on DLT trading. So if you've got one, are you thinking of picking one up? These are not bad and the scales are made in the United States and they're like 70 bucks, which is as far as custom scales go, that's pretty good, right? So, you know, if you're looking for motivation and something like that, I think Lynch also does a deep carry clip for the 20.5. Just so you know, this stuff is here. Um, let's go back to the new arrivals page here and we're just gonna look through real quick. I don't think that there's, there were a couple of things that were like, oh, okay. Um, there are quite a few Hoback Sumos hanging out on DLT trading, not just these two, the bead blast and the gray accents and then we've got the a uh, sandblast with the stonewashed DLC blade. That's Those are cool setups. They have those and I think two or three other variants. So if you've been looking for a Sumo, which is one of the most fidget-friendly knives, it is a button lock, it's a flipper, it's a thumb stud deployer, it's a thumb slot deployer. Um, yeah, uh, if you're looking for something like that, they are freaking expensive. But, you know, they're there um, if you are looking for them. New hinder parts, um, textured black canvas micarta scale, some no slot clips for um, I pretty much every hinder knife because those pocket clips are like universal. So if you've been looking for a no slot, well, if you've been looking for something different for your hinder knife um, and you just don't like the slot in the clip, they have some no slots. 
Um, the Buck High Line is actually substantially more interesting than I thought it would be. And for 35 bucks, it's hard to argue with it. Um, some Protec SBRs. If you have a Capara, uh, we've got some fat carbon custom scales for the Capara, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, standard, standard scales are okay, but these I think are a lot more interesting. RGT little native scales, which is kind of random, but okay. Uh, they're there. I know a lot of people have the little native. It's just kind of, that's just a bizarre choice. Um, nothing here that I'm really, uh, people are always like, why don't you ever go over the case knives? I don't know. Cause I'm just not really interested in them. Sorry. Smooth black canvas micarta scale for the, that'd be super sharp looking on some, um, certain hinderer finishes. Uh, battle horse. I don't know. Not really fixed blades that interest me. So hold back way back MK five there. Woof. 700 bucks though. Yeesh. That's a lot of money. Uh, Heretic Manticores are hanging out. Um, those are pretty good price. Uh, those are a pretty good price for a uh, US made OTF that is a heavy competitor, in my opinion, for Microtech and Guardian Tactical. Whole bunch of Phoenix flashlights here. Can't say I've really ever had a lot of experience with Phoenix. Lion Steel Fixed Blades, Lion Steel SR22s in aluminum. More Heretic Manticores. Oh, we got some interesting, some Blackjack Bowies. Those look pretty nice. I don't know anything about the um, company, but like, ooh, Blackjack Model 14. I'm just going to look at this. That's a real handsome, that's a real handsome looking fixed blade. <laughs> oh, oh, I kind of like that. Uh, 12 inches, Blade Steel's A2. I mean, that's a good steel fixed blade. It's just, you know. I, people got on me, it, it, like the whole steel thing, you know. I, I think some people were very confused about my stance on steel. Um, so just so people, know, like some, somebody made a comment about me freaking out about the um, magna cut that was on um, the, uh, uh, what was it, the tactile knife company uh, Rockwall the other day. And he was like, because I did that video about steel and how we need to kind of like stop putting M390 on a, such a pedestal. And he said... You know, for somebody who, um, you know, says steel doesn't matter, you sure are freaking out about this uh, magna cut. And I never once, not once in any video that I've ever done, ever, have I even hinted uh, about steel not mattering. <laughs> I don't know. The only way that you can come to that conclusion is by watching two seconds of the video and going, I've seen enough. <laughs> like, that's not at all what I said. There are certain tiers of steel that I expect to see. Uh, at certain price points, but um, my, you know, a lot of the point was, is, you know, people just uh, assuming automatically that certain compositions are so vastly superior to other compositions that are actually in the same arena as, you know, the what I pointed out in the video, the difference between S30V and CPM 20 CV um, is, you know, there's a difference in corrosion resistance and of course, um, potential edge retention, but S30V, you know, where it, it lacks against 20CV uh, is uh, certainly easier to sharpen and definitely tougher, which are attributes that you should be considering, whether it's a fixed blade or a folding knife. Furthermore, the difference in cost from the people who are creating knives, they're buying this steel from, say, Crucible, the difference in cost between CPM S30V and CPM 20CV is so marginal. So it's hilarious that we automatically are like CPM 20CV is universally better and automatically worth it on a super expensive knife over S30V. For example, if we had a $500 knife made of S30V and another $500 knife versus CPM 20CV, people are automatically, without thinking about it at all, they're just like, that S30V one is overpriced, but the 20CV one is A-OK, -okay, which makes no sense. So. I hope that cleared it up. Well, I'm sitting here, you know, kind of turning my nose up to A2 because it's not a steel composition considering what I generally expect to see, you know, in this price point as a folding knife guy, right? It's not A2. But then again, I'm not a fixed blade guy and there's a lot more that went into this knife that's going to ultimately attribute to that higher price tag than just the steel. The stuff that really matters in the end is how long did the item take to create? How much time, energy, work, right? And how much is that costing the people um, when they're putting this all together? The materials are not adding nearly as much to that final price tag as people so often assume. But 
That's why I made that video, because I was hoping to clear that up. <laughs> All it did is confuse people who are only willing to watch a couple minutes of it. Anyways, that Blackjack Model 14 sure looks nice. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways, let's see. I'm going to go one more page here. Well, these are I kind of like the little guys, too. Oh. These are nice looking fixed blades. I think I just really like the cross guard there. Okay. Anyways, moving on here. Boy, there's a here's a whole page of stuff I'm not really interested in at all. Ah, uh, that pen's kind of neat. The Olight pen. All right. Is it also a flashlight? I hope it is. More RGT scales for the Spyderco Capara. I think I've been I think I've been this far back. I think we're actually getting to the point where um I remember being the last time that I did this video. Yeah, this is all looking very, very familiar. I think that's going to be pretty much it today. Um, if you are hunting the Demco 8020.5, uh, DLT Trading is also a retailer that has dropped multiple variants. Um, Shark's Foot, Clip Point, both OD Green and uh, the Standard Gray. Uh, it won't surprise me if very soon we see a coded or like tumbled DLC version dropping somewhere. It won't surprise me if DLT does it. I'm sure they will continue to do exclusives. I know people are wondering, those of you who are hunting the 20.5, when are we going to see a version of it with a different steel? I have heard that those are coming, but probably not for a while. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know what a while is. If it's like a, if it's like a few months or if it's like over a year, I don't know. Um, but I, I've I've heard the rumor is is that those are coming. It's just not going to be for a while. So, anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. I hope you guys found something that you you know are interested in. I'll try and link a bunch of this stuff right down in the description so you guys can check it out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.